Welcome back guys, it's Marlon Echeverry from the Natural Resources Science Multimedia Lab here at Miami-Dade campus, Kendall. We're going to be looking today at what's known as the dilution equation. This is a continuation from the solutions video where we explain to you what a solute is, what it means to have a solution, and now we're going to be taking a look at the formula that's involved in this. The formula is V1 times C1 is equal to V2 times C2. Uh, you have to understand what these variables mean, so we have volume initial is V1, C1 is concentration initial, you have V2 which equals final volume and then you have C2 which equals concentration final. You'll know you have to use the dilution equation whenever you run into a problem where they're either adding water or they simply tell you that they're creating a dilute solution. That's the key word you want to look for. You have to make sure that you try and keep your concentrated variables on the left side and you keep the dilute variables on the right side. If you were to invert these, it would still work as long as you keep them together in a group. Let's take a closer look at a problem so we can understand what I'm referring to. So, if we have a concentrated solution of, let's go ahead and say, 10 molar hydrochloric acid. And let's say that we're working in a lab and they tell you that, hey, they need a solution that's only 2 molar and they only need one liter. So quite clearly we're creating something that's dilute here because we have two molar and we started off with 10 molar HCl. So here's our concentrated solution of HCl and the real question that they're asking us is how much of this do we need to pour into our dilute solution in order to create our quantity of solution at this particular concentration. So what they're really asking us for is for the volume initial. And this is quite common. You'll see that they're going to always ask for one of the variables from the dilution equation. Your task is to write the variable, the equation, and then plug in for those variables. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have C1, V1 times C1 is equal to V2 times C2. You simply plug in the variables. So here we have the concentrated solution. So I'll go ahead and plug in here, 10 molar. Over here, I have V2, my final volume, which I know I need one liter. My concentration final. My concentration final that I was shooting for was two molar. And then my unknown is over here. It's my volume initial. So how do I solve for this equation? Well, I need to just go ahead and divide both sides by 10 molar. When you bring it over here, notice that the units of molar cancel. So you're actually left with your answer in the correct units, which is the units of liters. And it tells you when you do the math that your volume initial should simply be 0.2 liters. Now, this raises another question. If your volume initial that you're bringing over here is only 0.2 liters, so it would only be a small amount, and that would be your hydrochloric acid, how do we raise the volume up to one liter? Well, we're going to have to add something. And that's something that you have to add is water. And if you need to figure out how, how much water to add, you simply do a little bit of subtraction, where you say, if I need one liter, and I already have 0 0.2 liters, then what I need of water is 0 0.8 liters of H2O. So that's how you would solve for this question. This can come up once in a while. It's a very tricky question. It will ask you instead, not for the volume initial, but it will ask you for how much water to add. So be on the lookout for that. That would just basically mean that here you need 0.8 liters of H2O. So one of the most important things when you're reading these questions is to be sure you're aware of what they're asking for exactly. If you use the dilution equation correctly, you should have no problem with these questions. Thank you and I hope it helped.